feverfew was one of the first herbs that I actually ever purchased and one of my first clients that I ever saw and somewhere in the herbal extract um, information online, I don't know if it's still there, is a case study that I wrote on one of my very first clients who had migraines. With a name like feverfew, it could be assumed correctly that it um, is historically used as a fever reducing herb. So it's cooling, it is a cooling plant. Um, daisy like, very beautiful. Even, you know, the first century um, Greek physician Dioscorides, who comes up a lot in mm-hmm. historical, um, when we're looking at the history of, of plants, he prescribed it for all hot inflammation. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business, and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello, and welcome back to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. And we've got Christine Thomas, the researcher from the Herbal Extract Company in Sydney with us again today. Hello, Christine. How are you? Well, thank you. And today we've got Feverfew. Now, Feverfew was one of the first herbs that I actually ever purchased and one of my first clients that I ever saw and somewhere in the Herbal Extract um, information online, I don't know if it's still there, is a case study that I wrote on one of my very first clients who had migraines and I gave her feverfew. And so when um, Christine said, oh, let's talk about feverfew, I was like, oh, yes, please. And um, so tell us more about feverfew, Christine. Uh, yes, well, yeah, with, I mean, you just, with a name like feverfew, it could be assumed correctly that it um, is historically used as a fever reducing herb. So it's cooling, it is a cooling plant. Um, daisy like, very beautiful looking uh, little daisy. Um, and even, you know, the first century um, Greek physician Dioscorides, who comes up a lot in mm-hmm. historical, um, when we're looking at the history of, of plants when I'm writing monographs, um, he prescribed it for all hot inflammations as an antipyretic, which as we were talking about in another session, we were talking about immune health um, for helping to reduce fever. Um, And it was known as medieval aspirin or the aspirin of the 18th century. So as well as, I mean, we can get into migraines, but um, its name uh, says it all. (laughs) Yeah. um, It's common name, that is, um, fever few. Um, But as you said, more recently, it's gained a reputation as the, it's sort of famous as not being known as the migraine herb. And there's been a great deal of interest in to its activity in the treatment and prevention of migraine headaches. Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting, I only ever give it as a simple, so I only ever give it by itself. I never mix it in a herbal mix so that they can take it you know, as required if I, or, you know, I might have them having it every single day, but it means that I can totally titrate it or I can say, yes, you can have, because if they're, because therapeutic dose, it's five to 10 mils per week. So if they're they're on a mil a day, that's seven. And it means if they do get that migraine, then they can have that extra mil if they need it to help kick that migraine. So, and you mentioned here, there's a large randomized trial. Um for migraines 170 yeah. clients 170 patients so you know i mean that's for us <laughs> a yeah, great number no, no, it's, we're always excited when we get human studies because <laughs> a lot of the studies done on herbal medicine are on um preclinical like in the test tube or in mm. animal, which is on, uh, unfortunate we don't like to talk about the animal trials but i mean yeah. i try and only use um the human trials, but sometimes they aren't human trials. So we have to look at the um, test tube evidence just to get some signs, but we can't extrapolate that to human use. Mm. However, with Feverview, it's one of the few that we have 170 migraine patients. Um, This was uh, in 2018, actually, this study. Mm. So not too long ago. 
Um, I also try and keep them quite current um, as yes. well, like in the last five years, we're using these studies. Um, and it showed overall good tolerability and a reduction in migraine attacks. Um, that was with 6.25 milligrams of fever view, fever view extract. And that's with these studies, I mean, we have to look, they're all different types of uh, extracts. And, um, you know, when we're extrapolating a human study to our product, um, you know, it can be quite different to what they used in the study. So again, it's still um, just a sign that uh, it's possibly going to be used. And you were talking about the dosing. Mm. Um, they were using 6.25 milligrams. I mean, we recommend one to five mil a week. Um, and with dosing, um, our doses are there just as a guide. They're mm. not the maximum toxic dose. So mm. it's up to the practitioner what they want to give. It's just um, we take them from pharmacopoeias, from Lindsay, who started the company, Lindsay Shins, um, his uh, experience. Um, and, you know, really dosing is where the art of herbal medicine is. Yeah. Um, so you can give less and you can give more um, within reason. Um, it's just there as a guide. But when we look at the studies with fever few, um, that our dosing is about what they're using in the study. So there's another study where they gave about 100 to 300 milligrams of fever view four times daily. Now, if you're giving one mil of our product, it's a one-to-one -one herb. We make a one-to-one -one herb. So for every mil, you're going to be getting a gram of the herb. So that means um, we're recommending one mil a week, which is one gram a week equivalent. In these studies, they're giving about 100 to 300 milligrams a day, up to four times a day. So yeah. that is equivalent to what, you know, if you look at one milligram, 1,000 milligrams a week. Yeah. Bring that down to seven days, it's about 140 grams a day. Yeah. Um, so that's so, I mean, we've, yeah, we've got, um, I mean, it doesn't taste too awful. It's not the end of the world taste-wise when it's mixed with a bit of water. So um, very, one thing I, yeah. hey? It's a very small amount. Yeah, isn't it? it's a very small amount. So it really, you know, you, you know, using less than a mil mostly. So, you know, it's going, it's not a tough one for our clients to take. And we're taking it as a single rather than mixing it in. So we know we know how much they're going to get. And um, But something else, just to change slightly, I've just spotted at the bottom of your review here, hot flushes and menopause. I yes, would sure. never have thought. It's a renowned um, herb for women. And, um, you know, headaches, irritability and tension, you know, like the liverish premenstrual syndrome can be treated because it's quite a bitter herb. Yes. It's, it's good for the liver. And um, it's a traditional amenagogue for sluggish menstrual flow, painful periods. Um, and traditionally, as you said, for the hot flushes of menopause, it's that cooling herb, cooling bitter herb. Wow. May also help with arthritis when it's in the painfully um, active and uh, inflammatory stage. Um, so, yeah, I know it's, it's funny. Herbs have lots of different broad actions and, um, yeah, they, you know, you think of it as the might, they kind of get pigeonholed. Yes. Fever pews being pigeonholed as the migraine herb, but um, it does have, um, you know, action for women as well. Other, very much other uses. And, and I think with the pigeonholing, um, we forget ourselves. I'm sure I probably learned that in college all those many, many moons ago that um, fever flip few was for other things. And yet, you know, I've used it once for that. So, I mean, she wasn't my first ever client. Um, she was close to first ever client, but it took me a while to write the um, case study on it. It took me a couple of years, I think, to write the case study and send it to you guys. But I mean, because it's pigeonholed then in my mind as this is the woman who had this migraine and this is what I gave her. I gave her uh, um, whatever the liquid herbs were. I'm sure the case study is still there and the fever few as a, as a simple. And that's what she had. And we got over these absolutely debilitating migraines. So, and they weren't, they weren't hormonal migraines. She'd had them, but 
they were and that she'd had them from the age of 13 when she'd mm. um, started menstruating so right. but they would just happen absolutely debilitating um she would literally collapse wherever she was and not be able to move and so you know i have you know she'd normally make it to a phone to be able to ring a family member to come and get her wow. and then she'd be out for the count for 24 hours and we stopped them with a herbal mix and with the fever few and increased fluid and some diet changes and all the other things but they weren't as sig those changes weren't actually as significant as the herbs in her yeah. case which is why i sent it in as a case study so um really really interesting herb and great um, result yeah amazing result amazing results for her um totally debilitating and then you know no she doesn't have migraines anymore yeah. having had them from the age of 13 to I think she was I don't remember the age it'll be on there 30 something um you know debilitating migraines and to no longer have them and it was 100% the herbs so there was very little dietary change she didn't really change that much in her diet overall it was a pretty good diet exercise she's actually a mad woman when it comes to exercise that I don't think has changed that probably has increased since then but um you know it was just the fever few and the herbal mixes so they do incredible things and when you see them like that work like magic like that powerful. yeah it's really really powerful to see the change in someone from using the herbs it's absolutely phenomenal so no, but i did put it's a very similar story to yours the first modern public account of its use for preventative um for migraines was in 1978 Mm -hmm. There was a story um, reported in the British Health Magazine, Prevention, concerning a patient who had suffered from severe migraines from, since the age of 16, so a bit similar mm -hmm. to your patient. Um, at the age of 68, she had been using three leaves of fever few a day, and after 10 months, her headaches had ceased completely. Yeah. So it took a while, you know, it doesn't yeah. happen overnight, does yeah. it? It takes time. That's the thing with herbs, they're not um, pharmaceuticals. Mm. If they are being pharmaceuticalized a bit these days as we isolate constituents and um, mm. standardize them and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, they, they take a lot longer to work, but if you stick mm. with it, and I mean, you know, we look at, if she'd had this since she was 16, yeah. this is like a, you know, a theory that for every um, year you've had it, it's a month of herb. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's a very broad um, way to look at it. But, I mean, she was 68 when she started this, so yeah. it's not going to happen immediately. No. Just, yeah. Uh, so 10 months is actually quite a quick resolution. Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, so, but that is it, isn't it? Everything that we do takes time because there's a whole body change that has to occur. Lifestyle change has to occur. The herbs have to be going in. And the acute stuff, yeah, we get rid of that. You've only had a cold for 24 hours. So we help you get through the cold. You still have to have the cold. You get through the cold, you get over the cold. Um, but it's not going to take you months to get over it because it's acute and it's short term. So here we've got something in that example or in the example of my lady um, where something was very chronic, very debilitating. And then we've used the herbs to resolve the issue. So it's really wonderful and makes you feel like a complete genius when you've done these things. So, yeah. So if you've enjoyed today, please make sure you give us a five-star review. That'd be lovely since you stayed to the end. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you next time on the Bite Size Podcast. Thank you, Christine. Bye. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the Herbal Discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.